Hey, what's poppin', man? You already know what time it is. Uh, Jay Hill. Let's get this straight. Uh, special guest. I wanted to bring this young lady on for a minute. She actually hit me back up when she was in the city. Thank mm -hmm. you. No problem. I don't want. I don't know if I should say look in the mirror or just the mirror. We a just, mirror. Just a mirror. That's how. A mirror. That's what it is. We gonna stamp that. Um, <laughs> yo. First of all, I want to say thanks for pulling up. Yes, no problem. You know, Appreciate I had to. It. Hey, yo. So uh, I want to get straight into it. You're a dancer, mm -hmm. a pretty good dancer. And we were talking off camera about how some of the things they used to say about you when you used to dance. <laughs> mm -hmm. Let's get into that. They used to say you dance hard? Yeah, what, what? but you know, everybody going to say what they need to say about you. They used to say I dance hard, I dance sloppy. First of all, what does that mean, dancing hard? I thought when you dance, you're supposed to give like facial expressions That's what expressions I thought too, exactly. You're supposed to give what you got, you know? But everybody don't understand lot. that. I just had a lot, and everybody didn't understand how much I had. But when I went to Atlanta, I went out there and I just trained and stuff. Mm -hmm. And they basically fixed what I got. They ain't, I knew like the main thing if I wanted to make it out there, don't lose everything that I had, but still take their directions from what they wanted to give me. Mm -hmm. And they basically just wanted to give me like the sauce and Atlanta pocket. But I'm like, all right, I'm gonna take that, but I'm not gonna lose my strength that I got, which so is that so hard. What so, was some of the things that you had to get rid of? I guess. Um, I just had to tone down a little bit. From, I just can't believe that you would have to tone down. But it's good because everybody don't know how to tone up. And when you do need somebody to, like, go hard, you know that you can call me. You know? <laughs> you were, you right. You know, up. so that's that's a plus that I can say I got. So what, what made you move from Baltimore to Atlanta? I wanted more opportunities. Mm. I felt like I did the dance classes here. Like, everybody knew me as, like, the top dancer in Baltimore and all that other stuff. I wanted to do more for myself. I'm like, so what else can I do in Baltimore? Nothing. Right. You know, like, I, it was literally nothing else I could do. So I'm like, let me just go out there and try it out and see what happens. And it worked in less than a year. So I was like, Jeez. oh, perfect. That's lit. Mm -hmm. Do you think, but how long, there's so many questions I do I want to ask. But it's just, I want to get enough of the, the right questions so the mm -hmm. people that's looking at you, the other dancers that's coming up, mm -hmm. they could get some motivation behind it. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to skip anything because I'm selfishly have questions for myself, right? Uh -huh. But um, I definitely want to talk about the transition from Baltimore to the A. Mm -hmm. When you say you were like the top dancer in Baltimore, it it was nobody else that you could find that might have critiqued your dancing or made your dancing better in Baltimore. You felt like you reached all heights. I felt like I reached all heights. Yeah. So, I honestly did. Like I was going to like the groups teaching them dances. Like I was like the choreographer okay. and stuff here. You know, so it was literally no other thing that I could do Makes to sense. better myself here. So but we, we talking about dancing. Mm -hmm. Is Atlanta, so I know in the music industry or entertainment industry, we talk about LA, Atlanta, New York, mm -hmm. um, now just Houston. Mm -hmm. Is it kind of similar with dancing? Is, is it is mm -hmm. just basically LA, New York, and Atlanta. Atlanta? Yep, so why Atlanta out of instead of LA or New York? Well, New York gives me more like contemporary ballet dancers, they All give right. me more, you know, they have a lot of hip hop dancers, but just when I look at New York, I think of that, you okay. know, so that was just somewhere I didn't really want to go for dancing. Then LA, they real sharp, like Atlanta is more swag, and makes I sense. just felt like that would be the route it's like I more urban. Take. Yeah, kinda. yeah, right, makes sense. and I'm happy I did go that way. Mm, so like when you, you said it took a year, you went to Atlanta, and what was the first thing or like the first class that you took or... Where did you go first? What was your first step getting to Atlanta? I went to college. All right. Mm -hmm. What school you went to? That's how I got there. I transferred to Clark from I, UMES. I, okay. people, a lot of people don't know that. But right, that I kind of used that so I would have somewhere to live. I would have, you know what I mean? That's smart. Mm -hmm. So I went to college and I was going to Clark. And every day I was just like, let me go to this dance studio and take classes. I was going to, to the main one down in Atlanta called Dance 411. Does they used to have like or? a TV show. Yeah, um, it's like $20 a class, but. That's not too bad, but was you there every, bad. like how, wait. I was there every 20? day of the week. That's but I, I got a membership, like yeah, I got a monthly membership oh, and right. I just had to pay like $100 a month. So it wasn't right, that that's bad. that's not bad. When yeah. you love it and it's your passion, it's not Exactly. Bad. Right, it's just like, it's just a regular membership, you know. Okay. You would spend yeah. your money on that going to the club anyway. I had to make sacrifices. I was literally on only going to dance sacrifices class. Sacrifices is important. Mm -hmm. It's important. So I was going to dance class every day and I just had the mindset like, I'm going to get better here and somebody going to see my face here. Like, mm -hmm. whatever. Whatever that means, somebody going to see me here. So I just kept going and then one time um, an agent had came up to me after class. Mm -hmm. It was just like, what's your name? Where you from? Are you new here? How old are you? Da, 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 da. 
So I gave him all my information, and he just was like, okay. And that's all I heard from him. Then he randomly started sending me auditions and stuff. And I went on the auditions. I wasn't booking nothing. I was crying at the auditions. I wasn't getting nothing. I just didn't understand why. And then I went to, I moved down there in August. So all of this, I started getting into the dance industry there in like October. That's when I started the dance class and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then in like March, that's when I had went to an audition for Escape. And I had booked that. What's that like? Six, seven? Don't, uh, not the What's that? Answer. August? <laughs> December, January, February, March. Five months. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, that is real. We ain't, yeah. We ain't trying to pick nothing. It um, is what it is. All right, so five months. Yeah. That's when you started. I started actually working, and mm. I did the thing with Escape, and then Escape was actually a tour and everything like that. And I just felt like when one person see you do a job, a lot of people be like, okay, she can actually complete a job, so let me try her out on something else, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Then after I did that with Escape, the choreographer, Sean Bankhead, he mm -hmm. was the choreographer for Escape 2. He had caught me in the Dumigos BT Awards. And then it just was falling in from that. Wait, so I feel like me Migos B T was was that was June. last that was last June, June. last year. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen the work so far before that even happened. Honestly, like that happened in June, but it seemed like it was so far because I never like stopped going as hard as I went since I was in Baltimore. But mm -hmm. me being in Atlanta happened real quick. Okay, so let's talk about the. The mental capacity, because we know today we always talk about mental mental health, right? It's, mm -hmm. it's huge. It's important. You got to take it's, care of yourself. It's real. I'm always talking about that. Like, you really, I feel like in any industry, you got to keep yourself grounded. Mm -hmm. Like, I have times where I just got right in a notebook or just, you know what I mean? Because it can really, like, the industry can really mess your head up. Like, you ain't light enough for this job. You ain't mm -hmm. dark enough. Your hair red, so you can't get this job. So um, you really went through the, you ain't light enough for this job? If they want a dark skin girl, that's what they want. Or you you ain't, so have you ever I know seen? I auditioned for um, something for a while and now, um, like a few months ago, and you had to be, I made it to like the last six girls, and then I got cut because I was too short. And they wanted girls over 5'5", five five and I was only 5'3". Wow. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a lot of stuff where you be like, dang, like I was just this close, but I didn't get it because it wasn't tall enough. Do you think so. you've witnessed any racism in, in the industry or in the dance industry? No. Because it's like something we talk about, but. I feel like I'm in Atlanta, so uh, yeah. it's mainly black. Like, like if black. I was somewhere else, the, the black, black Hollywood. Yeah, black mm -hmm. Hollywood. I feel like if I was somewhere else, maybe I would, but right. I ain't really witnessed no, that. No, I get it. And, hey, yeah. So all right, speaking of Ms. Webb, I wanted to touch on the fact that um, just the your thought process of where you were going to each stage. So, correct me if I'm wrong, I feel mm -hmm. like because you was transferring from UMES to mm -hmm. Clark. Clark Atlanta, mm -hmm. it kind of was maybe exciting. Mm -hmm. All right, so it was I, exciting. So, we can, we can, we can, were you nervous at any given point? I feel like I was, I Anxious. was so to a point where I'm just like, I gotta get out of Baltimore. All right, I makes was sense. so happy to go. But I mean, UMES is. Eastern Shore, but, but I, I was get still it. in Baltimore yeah, all the sense. time. I you know, I, my parents, is my whole family and is here. And then when you're done class, you come back, there's yeah, probably nothing to do out Eastern Shore or Salisbury, exactly, which is like, Exactly, exactly. Cool. I was Makes going sense. home like every weekend, and I was just ready to go. All right, so let's talk. We got that excited, anxious, anxiety mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. All right, let's talk about the the process now. You're in Atlanta. You're at Clark Atlanta. Mm -hmm. you're, you're paying for this um, membership every month at this dance class. Mm -hmm. You get an agent that comes to you, mm -hmm. and he says uh, he wants you to try out mm -hmm. for auditions. auditions. Mm -hmm. You're trying out for these auditions, mm -hmm. but you're getting denied. Let's talk about where you at in your head at this point, right. and how do you get <laughs> over that? At this point, I'm in my head. I don't even know what I was thinking. I just know I used to be crying. Like, I know one audition I went to, I don't know what happened to me, but I just blacked out. Like, I, I, I didn't know what happened. I couldn't remember the step. Like, I just felt like a failure. I just know I called my parents after that, and I just was crying and crying. Like, what am I supposed to do? Because mm -hmm. I know, you know, I'm just like, after school, like, what's next? I want to get a car. I want to do stuff that I need money for, so I need to be working. At that point, I was like, all right, let me go get another job. Mm. So I actually tried to start doing, like, at like a little hookah girl at a bar. I did that for, like, a weekend. It wasn't for me. I just didn't know what to do. Right. I didn't know what to do. My parents were still um, supplying me financially, so they was kind of helping That's me out. Huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huge. They were still helping me out, just kept telling me, like, just keep training, keep training. But mentally, I was a little, like, 
on edge, but I wasn't ready to come home yet. I just felt like I need to go a little harder. So how do you get over that? At that at that given time, are you you're like, man, I don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. I think I'm good enough for it, but they're I'm they're saying I'm not. How do you get over that? Do you write? Cause you spoke about writing. I ain't start writing yet. Okay. I didn't know about the writing part yet. Mm-hmm. I just learned about writing not too long ago, but. I used to talk to my I used to, I talked to my family a lot. My parents like my best friends, so oh, that yeah. helped me a lot. So your support so system was exactly actually your way of getting over it. it. Yeah, it was my way of getting over I, that I, stage. I wanted to talk about that because it's so many people that go through the same thing that mm-hmm, we go through, mm-hmm. but because the world is so big, we don't know because we so focused yeah, on ourselves, I and know. it's nothing wrong with that. Mm-hmm. But it's like you we just don't, don't realize we don't realize, and we don't realize how important our stories can help somebody else. Mm-hmm. That's why I definitely want to go through that, and I want the people to know. Yeah. You might can take this outlet, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and work for a mirror, so it might can work for you. No, writing, now that I know about that, writing is definitely, like... What introduced you to writing? The best outlet. Um, Who was I talking to? I was talking to somebody, I can't remember, and they just was telling me, like, yeah, they was in a restaurant, we was in a restaurant, and they had that little journal, and they was writing in it. I'm like, you write it like that? Like, yeah, I love writing, it just helps. And then I started writing each time, I just felt a certain way. You know, when you write it down, I feel like... I want, like, a very private life now. I don't want people in my business. I don't want to keep telling everybody this and this and this about me. So I'm like, can't nobody spread my, spread no rumors about me. Can't nobody tell my business. I'm just writing to my journal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I just started really, then manifestation, I started getting into that. Whatever I started writing word. down. That's a good word. Mm-hmm, whatever I started writing down, weirdly what happened. Wow. And I would just go back to it in my journal, like, that's crazy. I wrote this. You know what I mean? So... Mm-hmm. That's why I really stuck to writing, and I still do it. Nah, somebody was, well, actually, my, girl, my girlfriend was telling me, um, write this down and mm-hmm. say it, mm-hmm. and then that's how you man- manifest it. Like, that's how it comes to life. You write it down, it you It really happens, it. yeah. And that's, that's huge. Um, yeah. It shows you where your faith is at, because mm-hmm. you got to have faith. And, mm-hmm. and how big is faith to you? Like, how, it's how huge. Big do you think it's, it's? I think it's really, it's really, it's really big What's faith me? to you, though? How do you, how do you describe faith? Like, what is that? <laughs> How do you define the word faith? faith? Yeah, what is it to you? Right, because I feel like I took a leap of faith when I left. I feel like Did you know? Because I feel like that, because you was excited, just my my, Mm -hmm. my opinion, Mm -hmm. somebody else could say differently. Mm -hmm. I feel like because you was excited, it was easy. It was, right. It didn't get hard until you start getting those doors closing in Mm -hmm. your face, and then it's like, now I need my faith. Right. I feel like faith is really just pride and believing it. You could do something like if you don't believe in yourself, who's going to believe in you? That's you know, so I feel like without faith, you can't get nowhere. Right. So we talking about uh, just before you left mm-hmm. <laughs> the rumors or the people going around saying you was dancing too hard. Mm-hmm. You being the top dancer in Baltimore, you hearing these little rumors. Mm-hmm. Pretty sure nobody probably signs your face or mm-hmm. you just hearing it. Yeah. How did that feel like? What? I'm the shit. Like, who That's what it you felt like. It felt khaki, like, like, why are y'all talking about me? <laughs> like, I'm what, it, <laughs> what am I doing wrong? Like, that's what it did feel like. But So it felt like, what am I doing wrong and not you got a nerve to yeah. say I'm... I'm not really that type of person to be like, yeah. I'm not really that type of girl that okay. be like, oh, well, fuck her. <laughs> Excuse my mouth. I mean, some I ain't, you like know, that, Yeah, but that's not me. I'm a very, I hear it, I see it. Okay, I'm going to just prove you wrong another way. But do that hurt you sometimes? Okay? It do. Mm-hmm. Oh, what, name us. I feel like words instance, words can hurt a lot. Well, not the words. You're just trying to prove everybody wrong. Mm-hmm. Me proving people wrong. No, it don't hurt now because I, like, I feel like now everything I'm doing is just proving everybody wrong who has something to say. Mm-hmm. That don't hurt me. It's I, just, I used to think like that and I was like, just trying to prove myself right to keep it mm-hmm. on Because I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get this bag and I'm trying to take I agree. it Yeah, I agree. I agree. So now we're talking about uh, you You dance on the stage with Amigos. Mm-hmm. Then, what's it? I just seen this, this Missy Elliott thing. And, mm-hmm. and it was crazy. Well, that's, I started the Amigos. All right. How was that? Like, you on the BT Awards and mad people was tagging you. And it's lit. Like, it's like, and it's this Migos. is my dream. Yeah, and it's the Migos. And, and they, they performing Bad and Bougie. Bad and Bougie at the time just came off of being, like, the number one mm-hmm. single in the world. Mm-hmm. Crazy. And we did um, whatever songs we did. We did Stir Fry and Walking Like I Talk It. Walking Like I Talk It. Mm-hmm. it sounds like a song that you probably want to get busy to. Yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was shocked. I was like, because they called me, like, the same week mm. saying that I booked it. And I'm like, oh. That's lit. So you tried out for that? No. It was the direct booking. So the choreographer called my agent, and my agent called me like, hey, 
Sean Bankhead wants to try you out for this job. He don't usually try out new girls. I think you should do it. Da, 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 da. I'm like, yeah, I'm doing it. Wow. I was scared. So Sean Bankhead is the uh, he the is, choreographer. Yes, yeah. Like he the goat. He he everywhere. You tagged him. A few yeah, times? he just didn't miss him. I'm, I, mm -hmm. I, feel, I feel like I, I mm -hmm. went to his page and mm -hmm. it was lit. Yeah, <laughs> like he, he dancing. Did, he, yeah, yeah. He, he a dancer and a choreographer. But we get into the um the Missy Elliott and mm -hmm. did you want to touch more on Amigos? Cause I feel like yeah. I was scared, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I did, um, when I did, like, our sound check and stuff, my, I got bad anxiety. Mm. So I'm very, like, I'm excited about doing something, and I really look forward to doing something. But some reason, something in my body does something to me before I get there. Like, it's just, I always got a stomach ache. Like, I, it's just something always. You know what I think? What? I think that's the love and the mm -hmm. passion for dancing. Mm -hmm. um, I used to feel the same way, like, running track, and even now, when I'm having like a big interview, I get nervous as mm -hmm. hell. When I have a big host and I get nervous. But somebody was saying, if you don't, if you're not nervous for it, yeah. you don't love it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So yeah. because you love it so much, it's like, and you're, I'm assuming you have to be a perfectionist. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's like, I want to do this and I got to do it right. So you probably you don't want to mess up. Yeah. And yeah. That's how it is. But that's, that's a good thing. Because then you go out there and you kill it. Exactly. Buy right. It. Right. So right. how do you control that at, in, in that given moment? How do you control your anxiety? I don't know. That's why I started talking about this Migos one because I was like, whoa, when we had to do our sound check and we practiced on stage with them, that's where they do like camera blocking and see where they want the cameras and stuff to go. I literally felt like I wanted to run off stage. My stomach was hurting so bad. Jeez. Like, I didn't know what to do, but when we did the show and stuff, I didn't feel none of that. Right. And it'd just be crazy because as soon as we done dancing and I got it out the way, my stomach magically don't hurt no more. Like. I, d I gotta figure out how to control it. I still ain't figured it <laughs> I out. Like I still be out, messed though. up. I still be messed up sometimes. Now, have you ever messed up on stage while you were dancing? Mm -mm. Oh, see, you you, you figured know. it out because you, yeah. you how how important is preparation Very. for these shows? And how Very. how often do you practice? How much are you preparing yourself for these shows before mm -hmm. the show time? It depends on the job. Sometimes we get a week. Sometimes we get like three days. Jeez. Um, when I did Essence Festival in July with City Girls, I had to learn that whole set the morning of. Damn. So, so how? Don't get no that's not hard. Man, it is. But when it's your job and it's what you do, you you got to show them I can do it. You don't mm. want to make it look like nothing too big for you. They say um, when preparation meets opportunity, that's when you get success. Mm -hmm. I feel like I prepared for those moments, even though those were moments where I only had a day. Me taking class every day and all that helped my ability to learn and get better. So and, you, you know, you so think the classes are definitely important for somebody definitely. that's trying to come up and dance. Mm -hmm. Those little videos and stuff that you see on Instagram in Atlanta, we got one hour to stretch, learn, and record. So when people be like, "Dang, that was so good," da 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 da, you learn that in less than an hour. Wow, I, yo, let's talk about that because I feel like, and maybe I might just be paying attention, just started paying attention because I don't mm -hmm. want to knock anybody, mm -hmm. uh, hustle or grind. Mm -hmm. I feel like these classes or these videos. Just started getting popular in like the last one or two years, but it might have been been around. I feel like they've been around. It was more YouTube world though. Okay. I feel like Instagram recently dancing has been becoming very trendy on Instagram. This to where is so fire. so many people want to dance now. And then I think so have have um artists been posting these videos too? Because I feel like a lot of artists are posting. They these videos they now hopping too. on the wave. You know that's that's what I was saying about riding the wave. Mm -hmm. Now you see a lot of artists want to post like dance challenge because they know once the dancers and stuff do that stuff yeah, yeah, and yeah. dance to the songs is more promotion for them so that's why i feel like instagram has definitely been a way for dancing to get more trendy and you lately. feel like that's hopping on a wave just for the artists y'all ain't never did no challenges yeah right. they be coming up with the weirdest songs <laughs> talking about you, challenge do you, how do you feel about <laughs> that because I, I feel like as a dancer this is what i this is what you've been doing right mm -hmm. and now you want to do this to create opportunity for you but you ain't been giving us an opportunity before. How right. does that? How does that? One, I feel like you still want to do it because like it's still. Yeah, I feel help, like it, it can still but, help dancers. I wouldn't tell nobody don't do a challenge. But at a point, it's like I know you still like annoying kind of. Yeah, because like, everybody want to do challenges. Mm. It, it just gets weird sometimes. Like when I see like people like you know Tiana Taylor just did a big one. That's not nothing new because it's Tiana Taylor. Right. Like she dances. Yeah, she's, she's you know what I mean. Yeah. So when it's people like her. 
But when it's just random, you know, like up and coming artists, sometimes they know that that can be a way for them to get a bigger platform. So mm. they'll post like this song and do a dance challenge. You'll win a hundred dollars or something. A hundred dollars? You're giving out like ten thousand out here. People That's what Tiana out. video is like three thousand. I don't and know why I ain't hopping on to, that. To, uh, huh? to dance? Anybody offer you money to dance on that, like for a video or not even dance in that video, but like just dance and act like it's genuine. for uh, uh Instagram video. Yeah. So people do be want me to do that, but honestly, I don't do it all. The time because sometimes I don't like the song. They got it's really hard for you to you so how much <laughs> how, I'm trying to figure out what's a number that's gonna make a mirror dance to the song to like, like this song. Like, like what? what? What's the number? <laughs> Throw the number out there. I don't know because I gotta like the dance that I gotta so five okay. thousand dollars. If I give you five thousand, I'm gonna do it. Right. I'm definitely gonna do so it for five thousand, but that's bands. it's gonna be forcing it. I got to force myself to like the song, but force myself it, to make up a dance to this song, and force my followers to try to like this video. That's a lot. And you know followers are very iffy, too. Yeah, nah. So that's why I it's, don't even be liking it. A lot of people want to pay for Insta stuff on Instagram, they don't understand. You can pay for all you want, but the people, if they don't like it, if the they people not don't like exactly. it. That's exactly. it. Who else, you, who else you've caught hopping on a wave besides artists? Like, Do you feel like people... Damn, this is a good one. I kind of don't want to talk about it, but I got to. What? Do you feel like people in your city mm -hmm. from Baltimore hop on a wave too? Do you feel like it was a time where you was dancing and, yeah, you was getting love, but the people that was the upper echelons of the, the world or the city wasn't really showing you love. But mm -hmm. then once you start getting on TV, now mm -hmm. it was, what's up, little sis? Or mm -hmm. you feel yeah, like that? so many people who used to call me all these names. Now everybody want to call me the GOAT and this and this. But I, I like I said, I don't really react to stuff right. like publicly or let people know. But I'm the type of pe person that really peep stuff and just be like, oh, I see. You know, yes, like I, I see. And I see all the people who used to talk about me and they all be on Twitter talking about good about me now and on Instagram and I just be like, Oh, that's crazy. It's all good. We ain't worrying about nothing. You know? We're we gonna skip <laughs> We ain't gonna get too much attention. I told you we ain't gonna like, give that's it, crazy. too much mm -hmm. uh, attention. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We're gonna give it all to the positive like, cause when you when you manif manifest and exactly. positive you get positive back. Exactly. All right? So we ain't gonna talk about that shit. Mm -hmm. But uh anyway, let's talk about um, you did City Girls. What? What? Whoever shows you did? You did the Migos. I did City Girls because I feel like I'm missing. Yeah, I did Migos, City Girls, Escape. Sheesh. Um, I danced for Tiny Career personally too. Um, mm. I did Ti, Lil Duval, Yella Beezy. Um. Yellow Beezy. I just did Missy Elliott. We can't forget her. Missy Elliott is like Ooh, Jesus. five. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean. So who are right. I, I, like I did a lot. Missy Elliott is your favorite. Young and May. I forgot about her. Sheesh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, besides, it's two of them. Besides Missy Elliott, before you get to Missy Elliott, who was your favorite of the I feel like then you gonna say the Migos maybe. Let me but see. City Girls is, I feel like City Girls is lit too. I know. They all were so who, fun. Who, who was your favorite? My favorite artist to work with. Who I could, Okay. So, my favorite in which way? Because hands down, out of anybody, I'm going to always say Escape and Tiny. For real? Because she's so personal. Like, I actually feel comfortable with her. I don't feel like I'm dancing for her. And okay. she's the artist and I'm the dancer. You know what I mean? She really treats you like family. So, I love her. So, I'm going to always put her as my favorite. Okay. So, mm -hmm. I mean, then we're going to just stick with but Tiny. But dancing, okay. like, performance-wise, I feel like my favorite was... I think Migos. I think Migos. We, we, Missy Elliott, not in yeah, yeah, this bracket. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I was about Missy to say. Elliott, I like she, but <laughs> that's you, a legend. That that's like a, a legend. She's in a whole she, different category. I agree. Yes, I agree. How is Missy Elliott now? Do I feel like. I, I can't I, again, believe I, I was be, in there. I can't believe I was in there. I'm, again, that I might be wrong, yo. But I've been seeing some pictures on Twitter of Missy Elliott. She wasn't looking like this. Missy look good. She look good. Y'all, they she were sleeping like on this Missy. Back in the day. Like, come on, man. Missy look good. Everybody like, keeps saying Missy. Maybe I missed it because, like, she, yeah, she, she looked look pretty. Good. I'm like, I thought she was like a tomboy. -ish. Missy like, popping out on y'all. Nah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And she's older, mm -hmm. and she's like, she's grown backwards. That's what everybody like, says. She God. aging backwards. Yeah, she uh. backwards. <laughs> so, you think. How was that show? When you first got that, what was the first thing you said? When somebody said, yo. Right. When I got that, um, they called me in for a camera blocking. It was just like something for formations mm -hmm. um, in a rehearsal. And I was on set for a tiny new music video. 
and we was in a little dressing room and everything, and I got the message, and I just started crying. Like, mm. they was like, Amanda, don't mess up your makeup. I'm like, all right, y'all, I'm trying, I'm, let me try to keep it wow. up, because I can't mess up my face for this video, but I was literally shook. Like, I couldn't believe it. It's not a hard, that's not an easy job to do. No, I believe you. I and I, I felt like a, every dancer's dream is, like, to dance with Missy Elliott, like. What was the hardest obstacle to get over when preparing yourself for that Missy Elliott show? Um... The hardest out of school would be the full outness, which is weird for me telling you that I dance hard. <laughs> yeah, she don't play, and she's sitting in rehearsal with you the whole time. Mm. I ain't never time. been in no rehearsal like that where the artist don't take their eyes off you. She's watching. She wants her vision to be perfect. But that was something that I really admire about her because, you know, it, you can see that she's serious about her work, you know. Mm. So I did like that about her, but that was pretty tough. I feel like the stamina part, because if you look at that VMA performance, we was going. Mm. We had quick changes. We had, like, it was it was a lot. Yo, I feel like you said when you first came in, you were like, I don't like talking. I don't. But That's I why like I'm stuttering. Nah, but I feel like you've done a great <laughs> job. Like, this is, it's definitely just coming from the heart. It's genuine, so mm -hmm. I, I don't think you did bad at all. I think oh, you did great. Uh, wrapping up, uh, talk to Missy Elliott. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to ask you. Who are who? Who are some some lit dancers that's coming up now that you would like be on the lookout for? Dancers or yeah, dan yeah, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, who would I say? It's so many people. Like, cause it's some that people. Cause you know our platform is like Baltimore. They mm -hmm. don't really know the good dancers that's so already. So it, it don't have to be. Me, listen, or, we ain't. You know, I, I, wait, whoa. We ain't gonna put that that cap over our head. Our platform we're ain't not, Baltimore. I'm saying, you know, so I'm just saying, we, like, you we can have name a lot they can of be Baltimore. From, they could so be from somewhere. They, they could be from us. wherever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Somebody somewhere, she gonna see herself. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I never said I'm one of the next up. So what I do you think? feel like um, it's this girl named Tasir. She danced for Beyonce. She on tour with Chris Brown right now. She only 20, though. She not even 21. Hold up. I feel like I. I know who you're talking about. I don't know her personally, but mm -hmm. I feel like I've seen mad people tagging her. Yeah, you. I'm sure um, you have. She danced with Beyonce when they did the uh, the marching man mm -hmm. scene at what's that? Made it? Coachella. Was Coachella. Mm -hmm. I think I know who you're talking about. I feel like you do, but people just be sleeping. Where's she's she from? So quiet, Atlanta. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, I can see that. I can but see that. definitely to see her, she's like I look up to her, and she's younger than me. But that wow. girl was like a beast. I, so I speaking of um. People looking up to you. I feel mm -hmm. like a lot of dancers look up to you. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of girls, like y'all want to be just like a mirror. Mm -hmm. Can we get into some of the the real life instances before we get out? Cause mm -hmm. I, a lot of people see social media and they think everything is good. Everything mm -hmm. is just is flashing lights and mm -hmm. it's all good on that side. Mm -hmm. But in real life, just because you have a platform, don't mean you ain't going through it. You ain't still out here trying to grind and get mm -hmm. it too. What are some of the things that you're going through on a daily basis? That you gotta challenge yourself with just in this spotlight, still being a mirror, but like I'm still working to get to mm -hmm. this next level as well. I could say one of my biggest things when I had first moved to Atlanta was everybody in Baltimore looking at me like, this is a mirror, this is, you know, everybody loving me here, but there, I'm at the bottom of the bottom. Nobody mm. know my name. Nobody care about Instagram videos. Nobody care about how many followers you got. Like, they didn't care about none of that. So that was something real big for me, and that's why I felt like when I went there, I really had to build my name and up. And you overcame it in mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. that's lit. Yeah. Congrats on that. Thank you know what I'm saying? Doing big shit for Thank real. Thank you. So what about now? Now? now you didn't dance with Amigos. You danced with Missy Elliott. You danced with City Girls. You danced for uh <laughs> escape you know what i'm saying tiny mm -hmm. uh ti lord duval now you lit mm -hmm. you that nigga even in baltimore and in atlanta mm -hmm. but i'm still i'm sure it's still some things it that's is. like yo i'm still working it don't get it fucked up what's your don't get it fucked up to the people don't get it fucked up that i got bills and i'm an <laughs> adult and i gotta live when i went down there like i said i was going on school and stuff and my parents was helping me now i got a car I got my own apartment. Like, I got everything now. So it's very hard. I feel like as an entertainer, our work will always be kind of inconsistent. You mm, know what I mean? That's a fact. So oh, my God. You got to really go hard and grind so that you can have jobs, you know, always coming in and that you don't have a slow period. So are you dependent solely on dancing? Like, yeah, you don't do nothing else? Right now, I'm a full-time dancer. How do you... 
how do you map out your schedule so that you don't have a, a slow grace period or a slow period? How do you map it out like, all right, I'm going to get these gigs all the time? How, how does that work? I told you, I write it down and I just try to manifest. Mm. I really believe in manifestation because there's no way that you can really map it out. You don't know if somebody want to call you. You know, you don't know if... Are you reaching out to anybody or like... Mm -mm. I just got my agent. If it's an audition, they'll send it to me. I pray I book it, you know, but it's very much a... How many auditions he you sending you on a day? Um, auditions this year. I maybe only been to like five probably this year. So if it's not auditions, because that's not a lot. It's already like July. If it's not auditions, it'll be direct bookings. Okay. But you got to still go on those jobs and show them that you can do it. That's why I said Missy Elliott was so hard because I couldn't get comfortable. So do you think you're getting... So, all right, when you're on stage, there's a lot of dancers, right? Mm -hmm. How do you, somebody see you on a stage, on a big stage, like a Missy Elliott stage, right? And mm -hmm. like, all right, out of all these girls, I want that girl, which mm -hmm. would be you. Because mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure each show gives you more clientele, mm -hmm. more people want you because, mm -hmm. like, you've been through dancing mm -hmm. on the stage. But how does somebody recruit you on a, a stage full of dancers who have all been singly handed yeah. for this person? Be yourself. Like, I, that's one thing I really had to realize. I can't try to dance like nobody else. Mm -hmm. You know, people want me because I'm me. Right. And if I'm trying to be you, that they makes it, you know what I mean? <laughs> right, and that makes me something that I'm that not, not. And mm -hmm. it just doesn't look real. You know, I mm -hmm. feel like I'm very true to myself. Like, and performing on stage, that's just being character. Just be, I'll be feeling oh, that. Dancing hard as a mirror. Like, like, I'm going when hard. I did Fuck City Girls, said. when I did City Girls on the BT Awards, I looked back at that performance and I just was laughing because I didn't know I was doing all that on stage. My tongue was out my mouth. I was but singing the words with like, her. Though. I was doing a lot. I'm pretty sure the And it was, was like, a lot of people oh, complimenting right me on that. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. I just Listen, feel like I'm very true to myself. Continue to be true to yourself. So, what's next for a mirror? Where do you see yourself at next? What, what's, what's your next step? What are you trying to do? Well, I do plan on dancing for a long time. Mm. Um, after I worked on a few TV shows, um, I did American Soul, that's on BT, about um, Don Cornelius and the Soul Train and mm -hmm. all that. I had did that, and I was a dancer on like every episode. So being there for a whole season really made me want to get into acting. Mm. It's all good. <laughs> made <laughs> made me want to get into acting. So I feel like later on in life, I'm definitely going to branch into acting. But that's as far as right now, um, we're about to start filming American Soul season two again. So y'all can catch that on BET in February. Um, I just did Missy Elliott. I'm waiting for some music videos to come out. I did one with Megan Thee Stallion. Oh, and, nah, you're yeah. different now. That's lit. Yeah. That's lit. So I'm waiting for all that to drop. So I can't really say too much about it. I can't say what song. Beyonce hit you up yet? I'm waiting for her. She I want her. You. Listen. I want her back. I'm, you and my prayers. The whole city is behind you, of course. People that's in the line is behind you now. Mm -hmm. and I mean, only place from now is to go up. Yeah, that's how I feel. Thank you. No, no problem. I appreciate you for having I, I appreciate you for coming and allowing me to have you. Yes, See? thanks for having me. Listen, This man, was easier than I thought. Way easier. You <laughs> know what I'm saying? That's what, we, that's what we do. J. Hill, Amira, let's get this straight. Make sure you subscribe yeah. to the YouTube channel and everything, man. Subscribe and y'all watch out for him. We mm -hmm. out. It's a wrap.